Hey, what is up everybody? It's Animac here for Anime Uproar and I can't believe that MHA just revealed that Deku's dad is actually the president of the United States. Wow, I guess now we know why he's been away for work all this time. Okay, I'm kidding. It's April 1st, but we do have a real new chapter to get through and things have gotten crazy in the MHA story. International heroes, movie only characters, they're all here and that's just the beginning. All for One was willingly betrayed by one of his closest allies. Deku is reaching his limit and his body may be falling apart as he struggles against full power Shigaraki. And the future of Japan and the entire world depends on the outcome of these battles. So let's get into it. You guys know what to do, leave a quick like and comment right now to support us in that YouTube algorithm. And I have some pretty huge news. A brand new MHA video will be dropping very soon and I can say that it is the best video we've ever released. That is coming in the next day or two. Please subscribe right now and hit that notification bell so you don't miss it. I'm not kidding when I say that this will hit different. Finally, this video will contain MHA manga spoilers, so please proceed with caution. You have been warned. In the previous chapter, we learned how exactly Gigantomachia was released from his confinement and how Shinzo managed to gain control of this monstrous villain. Or I guess kind of gain control, but more on that later. Shinzo was able to climb up to Makia's head and then use a combination of his persona cords and his brainwashing quirk to turn Makia against the villains. The chapter ended as the battle against All for One in the present moment reached an absolute fever pitch and began to resemble a mythological clash of gods from Greek mythology. The battle between the Olympian gods and the Titans, the Titanomachia. The latest chapter picks up right where the previous left off with all the heroes and Gigantomachia teaming up against All for One. Tokoyami and the heroes who have been at Gunga all this time quickly realize that Shinso must be the one controlling Makia. And Mount Lady is doing her best to protect Makia from direct attacks by All for One in order to ensure that the effects of Shinso's quirk are not cancelled out by one of All for One's attacks. All for One also quickly figures out what's happening and he now understands how the Aoyama family managed to deceive him over the phone. Shinso had used his quirk in order to help them fool All for One. The villain states that a brainwashing quirk is something that is well suited to a villain like himself, but not a hero. And we know that this is one of the things that Shinso is extremely self-conscious about. All for One really has a gift for getting to people. He can pinpoint someone's greatest weakness and insecurity very quickly, and he can instantly try to exploit them to his advantage. All for One then launches an attack at Makia in an attempt to break the effect of Shinso's brainwashing, and for a moment it looks like it worked. Makia begins to speak, and he indicates that he knows who his real master is because he can smell him. On top of his hearing being extremely sensitive, Makia's sense of smell is also exceptional. But then Makia does something unexpected. Instead of immediately switching sides to back up his master, he asks all for one why he abandoned him in the mountains and told him to wait for his successor to arrive. Makia has been waiting for his true master All for One this entire time, but now he feels that he was abandoned by All for One. That moment of abandonment was extremely painful for Makia, and it had a profound effect on him. Initially, Hawks thinks that maybe Shinso is still controlling Makia and forcing him to talk, but that's not what's really happening. Shinso explains that Makia is actually resisting his brainwashing, and he is only the second person who was ever able to resist, the first person being Deku. Makia feels like he was betrayed by his master, the one that Makia would have sacrificed everything for, and it seems that this betrayal has made Makia extremely angry. This anger is what is allowing him to resist the effects of Shinso's quirk. Shinso did have Makia under control initially, but then he sensed Makia's anger, and now he's just kind of letting the anger take over while he hangs around as a safety mechanism. Even though many people call his brainwashing ability something that only a villain would use, Shinso's quirk doesn't actually have the power to change what is in people's hearts. And so Makia's current rebellion against All for One is not a result of Shinso's quirk. The main driving factors of the rebellion are Makia's feelings of anger and abandonment towards his master. If Shinso was the one controlling him, Makia would be more like a mindless, obedient zombie. 
he wouldn't be this passionate and this determined to have it out with All For One. As Kirishima uses his hardened body to protect Shinso from All For One's attack, Mount Lady, Dark Shadow, and Makia launch another assault on All For One. The three attacks come together to shake the entire battlefield, emphasizing once again what an epic and almost biblical battle this is. Now let's talk about those two helicopters that first appeared at the end of the previous chapter. In this chapter, the helicopters are revealed to belong to members of the media. Inspired by the footage of Gentle that La Brava was live streaming at the UA battlefield, these reporters decided to take control of a helicopter in order to report on the climactic battle currently happening between Deku and Shigaraki. In fact, one particular reporter remembers Deku from the time that she had casually interviewed him about the fact that All Might was now a teacher at UA. And she can't believe how much this young hero student has grown and changed in such a short amount of time. The second helicopter is being used by yet another journalist, the one who had been critical of the heroes during the press conference after Jakku because her mother had been injured during Makia's rampage. This reporter wants to undo the damage that she feels she has caused by being so harsh on the heroes at that press conference. And she wants to see what the heroes who are still fighting against all odds are going to do now that the situation is so dire. These heroes kept fighting even after many of the other heroes quit. These heroes kept fighting even after the other countries abandoned Japan to Shigaraki and the villains. And so, this reporter wants to show the world what will happen here, whether the outcome is good or bad. To her, this is more personal than professional, and it's clear that she respects and admires the heroes who are still standing and still fighting against seemingly impossible odds. Oh, and she's also sharing the helicopter with Big News Morgans for some reason. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if this Birdman journalist in the second chopper is an example of Horikoshi intentionally paying homage to One Piece. Back on the battlefield beneath the UA, Deku and Shigaraki have made contact. We see Deku holding Shigaraki by the wrists in order to prevent him from using the K, while Shigaraki laughs maniacally, as he tends to do. We don't get to see more of this battle, unfortunately, but due to the way that the Deku panel was drawn, it looks like there might be cracks forming on his face, and especially on his forehead. There's been a lot of speculation about this on the internet. I mean, it could just be an artistic choice by Horikoshi to emphasize the huge amount of strain that Deku is under, or it could be something more sinister. It could be an indication that Deku's body is beginning to collapse under the strain of overusing all of his quirks, and especially his newest quirk, Gear Shift which we were already warned has a very strict time limit. Deku's time at full power is running out, and these cracks could be a sign that it's almost over for Deku. I've seen people speculating online about these cracks, but again, I have to emphasize that it could be more of an artistic choice rather than an indication of Deku's imminent doom. Anyway, now that these climactic battles between the remaining heroes and villains are being both live-streamed and broadcast by reporters, and now that La Brava's livestream of Gentle has reached over 20,000 live viewers and growing, all of Japan and even the rest of the world is tuning in. Everyone is watching. The heroes who retired like Death Arms, international heroes like Salam, the US President and Admiral Akbar, and even movie-only characters from all three MHA movies, like Melissa Shield, Mahoro and Katsuma, and Rudy siblings, and many more. They are all watching to see what's happening in Japan. By the way, in case you didn't know, the MHA movies were always at least semi-canon. They featured characters and items that later appeared in the actual manga, although some minor changes were indeed made from the movies to the manga. I think that this emphasis on the entire world watching the events in Japan could be a hint that we are heading towards a more global conflict. A world war, if you will. It isn't hard to imagine that after international heroes see the Japanese heroes struggling against the villains, they will be motivated to join the fight and back up the Japanese heroes. But at the same time, international villains are out there as well, and they could decide to support the other side. We might even get entire governments getting involved if the situation gets bad enough. So yeah, depending on how this conflict progresses, we could have a major global incident happening very soon. 
in this chapter, Horikoshi specifically went out of his way to make sure that we all know that everyone is watching and that everything depends on the outcome of these final battles. So, what will the outcome be? Is Deku's time really running out and could his body be falling apart due to the fact that he keeps pushing himself too far? Personally, I do think that his time will run out soon, because the story already established that he was on a short time limit with Gear Shift. The only question is how long Deku will be out of commission when his time runs out, and who will step up to take on Shigaraki while Deku recovers. Shigaraki is now at full power and he has full use of all his quirks, so whoever tries to help Deku will have a massive challenge before them. And what about the fact that the whole world is watching this battle? Do you think that any international heroes or even villains may appear and play an important role in the battle eventually? Personally, I would like to see some of them appear because so far Star and Stripe was the only one that got any real screen time. But I honestly don't know if there's enough time for all of them to be introduced. It definitely feels like we're heading towards the finale and the end of the entire story seems closer than ever before. Finally, is Deku's dad the President of the United States? Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more in the future, leave a quick like and comment right now. It only takes you a second, but it helps me out with that YouTube algorithm. And as I said earlier, if you want to see that big new MHA video that will be coming out soon, possibly the best video we've ever made here on the channel, definitely subscribe and hit that notification bell right now. You can also hit me up on Twitter and Instagram at AnimeUproar. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, see ya, Space Cowboys!